My oh my, it's Mr. Thompson, uh, here with a science video lesson, uh, continuing on with physics, and we are talking today about graphing motion. So, drawing graphs, creating uh, diagrams to represent motion and movement, okay? Um, so, let's get into it. Okay, there are two types of graphs that we're going to look at in this video. Okay, there is the position graphs and the velocity graphs. Okay, we are going to start with position graphs. Okay, now these graphs are always going to be position versus time. Okay, movement is, is always pretty much uh, measured uh, in, in time. Uh, in, yeah, in comparison to the amount of time it takes and stuff like that. So we might have a graph <clears throat> that describes or, you know, illustrates movement, uh, the position uh, over a period of time. So our graphs are going to be xy graphs, right? y-axis, x-axis, and so on and so forth. Time is almost always on the x-axis. Very rarely will you have time not on the x-axis. So time goes down here on that horizontal axis. So, of course, uh, the y-axis is the position. So what this is showing us, you know, we could say, you know, at any particular time you have your xy, um, you know, points, you can plot some points on here, and it says, you know, at a certain time, this is the, the position, this is the distance, what it, what position really means when we're doing this graph, it means like the distance uh, from a reference point, so you might have, imagine like a race, and you have a starting point, and then the graph would say, how far have they gone, how far is the, you know, maybe there's a runner running, and over a certain amount of time, you know, how far, and you hope that the position, the distance from that starting line is increasing moving in the let's say do it with the video in that um up and to the right uh um direction right um so we can have all kinds of different graphs the first type of graph the first um you know situation that we might have is there's a straight line not going up and to the right like i just said right if it's just and i know this that line actually looks a little bit tiny bit crooked I think I'm going to try to fix that. Okay, there we go. That's pretty that's pretty horizontal. Okay. If there is a horizontal line, that means that at this time, you know, this is at whatever you, this might this, hopefully graphs in general will have like, you know, the axes labeled and stuff. So let's say this is 10 10 meters here. Well, down the track later it's the same distance. What that means is it's not moving, right? There is not actually any motion going on here. And that's, believe it or not, even though we're graphing motion, not moving is, you know, one designation of moving is not moving, right? Okay. Um, believe it or not. Okay. Next kind is like we were just saying, up and to the right means that as we go, as time goes on, the distance is increasing. Okay. So if, again, like you're tracking yourself on a race, hopefully over time, your distance along the, along the track or whatever is increasing. Okay, uh, so const and uh, and it's a straight line, so it's got constant speed and velocity. If it's not straight, then that's different. We'll look at that in a minute. But straight, a nice straight line has constant speed and velocity. Okay, now that the speed itself is the gradient, right? So the slope, if we calculate the rise over run, how much does it go up, divide by how much it goes over, that gives us the actual um, velocity, the speed, uh, um, you know, depending on whether this is a just distance or it's a, maybe it's a displacement graph or whatever. Usually graphs are displacement, but um, so that would be the, the velocity. <clears throat> now, if we have a curvy line like this, so it starts out flat, okay, and then it gets steeper, right? So the gradient increases, so that means the speed is increasing, so that is actually a graph of acceleration, okay, As if, it, if it's um, curving up like that, okay? Now, what if it goes down like that? Well, that's negative, um, negative gradient, so it's negative velocity, so it's moving back closer, the distance, you know, maybe, maybe your race was out and back, right? So you're now coming back, um, back towards where you started, right? Um, and if we're talking about displacement, then obviously, yeah, you're getting closer to where you started, right? Um, so like I said, negative velocity, it's ne got negative gradient and all that stuff, okay? All right, that's position versus time graphs. Let's look at velocity versus time, okay? Once again, we're going to have x, y axes, right? And once again, we're going to have time, which we can use just a t to uh, represent, 
Um, we're going to have time on that x-axis. And then, of course, we have v, little v with a little line um, for velocity. Okay. Now, if we have a, a horizontal line now, um, does that mean no motion like it did before? Well, let's think about it. At this time, at the start or whatever, somewhere here, we have a certain velocity. Well, that's not not moving, you know, unless the velocity is zero uh, down here. But there's some velocity here, so basically it's constant velocity. It could be constant zero velocity. It could be not moving, but um, for that to be the case, the line would have to be right here along the axis with zero velocity. This one shows that we have some velocity, so we have a constant velocity, um, and so constant movement, right? If we have uh, up and to the right, if we have a straight line, then the velocity is increasing. Whatever the velocity is here, uh, the velocity has increased uh, over time. So that means we are accelerating. Okay. And uh, if the line is going down, then we are, you know, you might say it's decelerating, but more accurately, it's negative acceleration. So it's accelerating in the opposite, you know, opposite direction as this one was. So if this is speeding up, um, then that could be slowing down, but it could also be speeding up in the other direction, okay? So that's why we don't just say deceleration or just slowing down. It's, it's acceleration in the opposite direction, okay? Um, now, there's lots of little, with these velocity versus time graphs, there's lots of little calculations we can do, okay? So this time, the gradient or slope equals the acceleration, okay? So... Um, the delta v over delta t, the change in velocity over the change in time, if we um, divide that, if you think about that, velocity divided by time, that's acceleration, right? It m makes a lot of sense, right? That equals a for acceleration. Um, now, this is the different part. Um, the displacement is equal to the area under the curve, okay? Now, what does that mean, or area under the line, okay? What does that mean? Well, if we want to find the displacement over a certain period of time, what we can do, <clears throat> say from you know the start of this green line to the end, or we could do any section in between. If we draw a, a line straight down, what we have there is a rectangle, right? If we find the area of that space under that line, uh, that will give us the displacement. And if you think about it, what we've got here, it's a rectangle, so the the height is that value of the velocity, and the width is the time. Well, time times velocity is distance, right, or displacement, right? So it actually makes a lot of sense. Now, the area under these other lines is going to be a triangle, okay? So we have to use, like, area formulas for area of a triangle, but it's still velocity uh, times time. Um, it's got that one half in there. Um, so it's going to be sort of a different value, but it's still velocity times time, so that still is displacement, okay? We sometimes might have more complex shapes, so for example, a trapezium, okay, which you can do a couple things. You can break it into a triangle and a rectangle, or you could do it as a trapezium, but it's one-half times change in time times the um, some of the two velocities, right, the uh, uh, bases, the two bases of the trapezium or trapezoid, right? So it's still time times velocity and so it still is the displacement so it if mathematically if you sort of understand how those things all work it actually makes sense with those formulas that we learned for speed uh, or velocity and distance and time or displacement and all that stuff so coming soon a video with some examples on you know what am i going to have to do with this what are the problems going to look like so for now try to wrap your head around this stuff and uh if you need some Examples, stay tuned. See you then.